All right, joining me now here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is Melissa Jira Grant. Melissa's work has been seen in The Nation, Jezebel, on Slate. She's a contributing editor to Jacobin. You can find her work at her website, which is posthoreamerica.com. You can also find her on Twitter at Melissa Jira. Melissa, thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, so Melissa, you currently have a really great article up at Reason.com, um, and it's called The War on Sex Workers. Why don't you just tell us all about it? Sure, yeah, it's on their website. It's also in their, their February print issue. Um, it's the first piece that I've, I've done for Reason. So the, the gist of the piece is, I feel like, particularly you know, for left-to-center folks, the conversation about sex work has been really dominated by this debate um, or what people characterize as a debate. You know, do we support prostitution? Do we um, regulate prostitution? Do we outlaw prostitution? And generally speaking, people who are involved in the sex industry are not considered to be um, part of this debate. (laughs) We don't actually (laughs) recognize that we are, you know, debating people's lives. Um, We are, you know, advancing political agendas that impact people's lives in a very real day-to-day way. I mean, right now in the United States, uh, no matter what people feel about prostitution, we live in a criminal envi- in a criminalized environment as sex workers. I've done sex work. Um, I uh, retired, I guess. I don't know. Sometimes I say I'm on strike until the laws change, but we have for, <laughs> it's, it's a hard career to juggle with, with freelance journalism. Um, yeah. But, you know, this is, this is something that I take both incredibly personally, but also from the piece. It's not a piece about my personal experience in sex work. What I did for this piece is to kind of shift the debate back onto the people who want to have it and say, you know, rather than obsess on what sex workers are doing in the course of sex work, rather than make this conversation about, you know, should people go to jail or they should, should they be rescued and rehabilitated, which for most people is very indistinguishable from jail, uh, to say, you know, those of you who are, you know, are making a political um, cause out of this issue and really, you know, looking at certain segments of the feminist movement and also certain segments of the religious right who are in alliance to really, um, you know, make prostitution part of their political uh, agenda. Why are they so concerned with um, what sex workers are doing? What impact does this have on their lives? Um, why are they coming together, you know, across the aisle, as it were? <laughs> um, to, <laughs> str- to, strange, to, strange to, bedfellows, really. Very strange bedfellows. <laughs> and, and in the piece yeah. I trace back, saying, you know, this is actually a relationship that this particular set of players, both in what I would call kind of conservative feminism or what was the Bernstein, a sociologist at Columbia University, called carceral feminism, um, this certain segment of the feminist movement who are really, you know, getting in bed with the police in a very significant way to say, you know what, really what we understand to be, you know, sex workers, sex workers, they understand it to be violent. And most of the time, these are people who have never done sex work. So it's confusing to me, you know, particularly as a feminist myself, the feminism I came up in, in the, you know, early 90s and onward, was about moving from your political, your personal experience and building your politics from that. And that the people who have direct lived experience of a phenomenon, be that you know, domestic violence, be that being queer, be that being a sex worker, that those are the people we should be listening to. And this is an issue in in feminism where that ethic is mostly ignored. So, you know, I wanted to to draw attention to that and then also say the consequence of that, when you ignore sex workers, you aren't hearing from us and from people who have all different kinds of experiences of sex work what it means to live under criminalization. If you're not listening to the people who are at the other end of these policies, who are at the other end of those inevitable handcuffs when you want to make Mm -hmm. prostitution illegal, um, your, your house is out of order as feminists. You are going to end up hurting the people that you are going around saying that you're helping. And that, that's the gist of it, to really throw that back on them and say, let's, let's change course because this is really a dangerous environment that we've created. Yeah, and, 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 and let's talk a little bit about, about some of the actions that are done against sex workers that, in reality, 
Uh, I mean, when it comes to stuff like Craigslist or Backpage ads, where where in reality, by taking that that away, it's not that it's not that sex work is going away. It's not that 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 is not going to exist anymore. What's happening in a lot of ways is that you what you had is maybe a more a safer environment for this to actually it, it does exist. That there's there's no way we can get around the fact that that it does actually exist, and there are sex workers out there. And so if it is if it exists by attacking the, the certain angle, what you're doing is actually taking away a safer way uh, and actually endangering sex workers in, 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 a, in a in a in a pretty horrible way. Correct. That's right. That's right. And you know, I think we may have slightly moved beyond, you know, one particular place where this conversation tends to get lost. I hate to call it a debate because I feel like Mm -hmm. we're not debating whether or not prostitution exists, should exist, or does exist. It does exist. And there are people who do sex work. And as far as I'm concerned, the only debate here is are sex workers in the debate or not? And if they are not in the conversation, then there's no conversation, right? We're just sitting over here pontificating about a group of people uh, at their own expense. And, And that's how this, current system is really set up so that like to me this is what explains something like the fight to have craigslist suspend ads for erotic services as they called it so those are ads that could cover you know a range of activities some of them legal some of them in kind of a legal gray area um, and some of them definitely criminalized and those ads for people who were placing them, and again, this is you know a broad spectrum of people. I think that when people imagine who sex workers are, they might think like, well, there is this small minority of people who, you know, chose to do this and are having a good time and making a lot of money, and they, maybe those are like, you know, the Ashley Alexander Dupree is like the woman who was became very famous for having been hired by Elliot Spitzer when he was governor of New York and also a patron of the VIP escort service. So I might imagine that kind of character, and then they think, but really, what it is is mostly people who are really struggling and really suffering and, you know, maybe are using drugs or faking drug addiction. Um, and what I want to encourage people to do is say there's actually a whole range of experience. And rather than think about this in this very narrow ways of people who are, you know, choosing to do sex work, which I would put in quotes because I don't think many of us describe the work that we do as choice, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we work because we work. We work because we must. And we try to find the work that is least harmful and takes the least out of us and gets us the most for it. And for people who do sex work to answer that problem that we all face of how am I going to get by in the world, some days they might have a great day at work. Some days it might be miserable. But for All of those people, no matter what their experience is, the law is treating them the same right now. And, you know, what what upsets me is it seems to be really driven by panic. These, you know, campaigns to take down sex workers' ads, they seem to be very shallow. Um, And they they never involve consulting with sex workers to see what the impact might be. So... You know, for somebody who did rely on a website like Craigslist or did rely on a website like Backpage, which which still does take adult ads, um, that can mean the difference between getting kicked out of their apartment or not that month, right, whether or not they're able to work. That can mean the difference between being able to feed your kids or not. This issue has so been blown out of proportion with all of this um, – what really seems like kind of a pseudo-feminist gloss, like I feel like the, the conventional way to talk about this right now in feminist circles and in some circles on the left as well, some progressives might say that really this is an issue of men's entitlement to women's bodies and we wish they didn't do that. Um, and you can have that opinion, but the reality is the ways that police have power over sex workers' lives is far greater than any power a customer might have over their lives. And in this current system of criminalization, we are creating an environment of violence against sex workers. We should not be surprised that when serial killers target sex workers as victims, they feel that they can get away with it. There was a a famous case in Washington State and in Portland State several years ago. This guy finally got caught. He's known as the Green River Killer. Gary Leon Ridgway, and he said explicitly that he killed as many prostitutes as he could because he didn't think anyone would care. And I think, you know, right now in New York, in Long Island, we have these unsolved murders, uh, many of them sex workers. 
the police are not doing anything about this. Why is this? I, how on earth can you say to somebody, you know, as, an, as a cop, this person yeah. that you're out arresting all the time, you're also supposed to be protecting them from violence. And we hear time and again, and this isn't just in the U.S., this is around the world, that sex workers face a lot of violence from police. And if progressives and feminists want to end violence against sex workers, that's really where they need to be looking, not at our workplaces, not in relationships that we have at work, but at this system of criminalization that we are working and trying to survive under, despite it. That, it it's so under... Um, under-prioritized and, and under-reported.